Hello, this is Mark Tooley, editor of Providence, a journal of Christianity and American foreign policy with the pleasure today of talking to my friend, Christian Forstner, head of the DC office of the Hans Seidel Foundation, a think tank associated with the Bavarian Christian Social Union. And so he is an expert on German politics and will share with, with us today his own analysis of the just concluded elections in Germany, uh, resulting, uh, well, of course, including the retirement of Chancellor Angela Merkel after over a decade and a half. Uh, the results are not yet uh, certain in terms of who will lead the next government, but the party that gained the most votes was the Social Democratic Party, and uh, we will see what happens. So, Christian, uh, what are your insights and what is going to happen? No, thank you, Mark, uh, for having me and inviting to talk uh, with you about the elections uh, in Germany, uh, which were held just recently, uh, uh, this past Sunday on the 26th of September. These elections were uh, transformative because Angela Merkel has announced uh, before the elections that uh, she will, so the long serving Chancellor Angela Merkel, um, the Chancellor of Germany since 2005, she has announced before the elections there uh, that she will not run again and she will be phasing out now from government. Yeah? So it's a matter of time when this will happen. Yeah? So as the system in Germany um, requires a majority in parliament and uh, the election results, uh, which uh, and we are gonna have um, a closer look uh, to the uh, results uh, in a minute, but the election results, uh, as usually in Germany, yeah, don't produce a majority winner. Yeah? So no political party gets a majority of seats in the parliament. Yeah? So they always need to forge coalitions yeah, with coalition partners. Yeah? They enter now um, negotiations, yeah? coalition negotiations. Yeah? This will take time. And for the time being, the current Chancellor Angela Merkel will remain in power. So we do have a caretaker government. Yeah? And this government remains in power until a new government yeah, will be sworn in. And this might take weeks, months, maybe half a year. Yeah? So there's no rush and no constitutional limit. So now quickly uh, to the election results. Yeah? So in general, what is important? Yeah? What, where do we have to look at yeah, when we talk about these elections? Yeah? First outcome, yeah? the center holds. So there was a lot of debate in previous years about the strengthening of the fringe parties yeah, on the left, on the right. So the former communists yeah, called the left or on the right side, yeah, the alternative for Germany of this right wing populist party, which um, benefits yeah, from um, resentment yeah, against migration, against European integration against the introduction of the euro, this uh, uh, common European currency. So the right wing and the left wing yeah, did not gain seats. Yeah? So the center still holds. Second, second big uh, um, 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 result, um, the turnout yeah, was high, as, um, even slightly higher than the previous elections. Uh, so it, it is around 80%, almost 80%, 80% of all eligible, eligible uh, voters in Germany yeah, cast their vote. Yeah. So this is a decent outcome. And in this context, yeah, again, this backdrop, yeah, there is no like a sense of any big fraud. So um, the election results are widely accepted. Yeah, they are not contested yeah, and they produce a legitimate um, winner and, um, 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 and, 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 and losers yeah? uh, who do have to accept the result and who do not uh, dispute yeah, the election results. Yeah? So democracy works. And um, a third, third outcome, yeah? um, more like a structural um, um, result. Yeah? So the CDU, which is the dominant force and has been the dominant force of center, so the right of center, Christian Democratic Union, yeah, with the sister party, as you have mentioned, yeah, the Bavarian sister party, the Christian Social Union, yeah, those conservative parties, yeah, 
always had the majority within the center yeah, in Germany. And now they narrowly lost it, yeah, and they are back at down to uh, 24, 25%, yeah, which is the lowest result ever yeah, since decades. Yeah. So this dominant force, yeah, the CDU, the Christian Democrats, yeah, the dominant force of the center, yeah, this is weakened yeah, and uh, partly yeah, non-existent anymore. So now, um, shortly, yeah, to to the more fundam uh, to more structural um, um, results, uh, which we could observe yeah, at recent at the recent elections. Uh, first, party allegiance yeah, is going down. Yeah, so this um, party voter yeah, who consistently votes for one political party yeah, does not exist anymore. So you have a lot of swing voters. Yeah, swing votes. Yeah. Um, um, swinging from one party to, to another for a variety of reasons, and we can have a closer look as well. Second, volatility. So sometimes, uh, so we had a, um, a month ago, we yeah, the CDU is still polling very high. A year ago, at almost 40%, we had a month ago the Green Party um, um, at, at number one party yeah, in the polls. Uh, uh, and now, um, uh, on, on election day, the CDU. Uh, uh, not doing uh, pretty well, yeah? the Greens down below 20%. Yeah? So you have volatility yeah? in voting uh, behavior. And uh, so these are the major, major. And, and you have a, a, um, maybe a third, a third aspect yeah? uh, worth mentioning, yeah? the big topics, yeah? the big issues. Yeah? Uh, it's climate change. So for the German voters, what, what, what matters most? It's climate change. It's social inclusion, it's migration and integration, and it is um, jobs uh, um, um, and, 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 and the economy after COVID. Yeah? And the last point, yeah, so against the spectrum, backdrop, yeah, volatility, a few, uh, and, uh, reduced party allegiance, yeah, personality matters more than party platform. So when you have fewer voters yeah, uh, attached consistently to a political party, but casting the vote based on very volatile yeah, and um, um, short-term considerations. Yeah. So the individual personality of this Spitzenkandidat matters more than the party platform. Yeah. So these are the basic outcomes. Yeah. And now we can um, happily have a closer look yeah, to the results and what that means uh, for um, a government building. So uh, good news and that parties of the extremes uh, did not increase their share of the vote this time around. Uh, the far right party, uh, which was animated, especially after the uh, acceptance of uh, so many uh, refugees and immigrants from the Middle East by Chancellor Merkel seems to have uh, receded for the moment. And the next government, uh, Christian, you think is likely to be led by the Social Democrats uh, with the Free Democrats and the Greens? Yes, most likely. Because if you look at the numbers, yeah, um, so the Social Democrats, yeah, uh, they gained seats. Yeah, the, um, the Greens gained seats. The Liberals of the FDP, they almost um, hold it, yeah, hold and, uh, uh, the numbers, yeah, what they got four years ago. Whereas the CDU, the Conservative Party, yeah, lost seats. Yeah. So, in, in theory, the CDU, the Conservatives, could still forge a coalition yeah, with the minor political parties, yeah, with the Greens and the um, Liberals. Yeah. It would be enough to get a majority. Yeah. But if you look at the voter, at the, um, the imperative of the voters, yeah, what the voters wanted to express by casting their vote, you would say they don't want to have the CDU with this offer of the Spitzenkandidat yeah, uh, to remain in power. The, voter don't, the voters don't want the CDU in power. Though. There's not a clear what wish uh, to remain in power. It's clearer or it's more um, um, consistent yeah, with the SPD and their Spitzenkandidat. Yeah. So in all polls, yeah, uh, when you compare the popularity of the Spitzenkandidat, of the front runners yeah, from the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats. Yeah. The Social Democrats candidate, yeah, Olaf Scholz, he fares better 
he is more liked, he's more popular, and his bar and his political party got more votes and more seats in the parliament. Yeah. So uh, in combination, you would say the voters would prefer a SPD-led coalition, and this is uh, practically and theoretically possible. Whereas for the CDU, that's only a theoretical possibility. Yeah, but the voters' wish would um, would not be uh, to 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 remain in power. And uh, polls revealed that uh, while older people still remained. Uh, more loyal to the historic parties, the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats. Uh, young people are much less tied to the historic parties and uh, more engaged with these uh, newer parties, the Greens, uh, the far right, the, the far left. Um, so back in the old days, the Social Democrats and Christian Democrats may get perhaps 40% of the vote. They got 25, 26% of the vote uh, in this election. Is this uh, a new permanent factor in German politics, or was this a passing phase of uh, so many political parties contending? No, it's certainly a wake up call for the traditional parties. Yeah. If they, for instance, what you, what you have said rightly uh, pointed at uh, the, the first time voters, yeah, they predominantly vote either for the Greens or for the Liberals, not for the extreme right. So number one, number two are the liberals and the greens, yeah? both political parties yeah? and the greens certainly yeah, are uh, to be considered a mainstream established and establishment party. So it's not a fringe party. It's not an extreme party. If you look at the, um, the voters yeah, more in detail yeah, of the green party, they are um, um, affluent, urban voters yeah, who can afford to live in the inner cities yeah, in nice apartments, yeah, children sometimes in, in, in private schools, yeah, well-paid jobs, yeah, and SOV, uh, driving an SOV, vacationing. Uh, so it's, it's this well-being yeah, and well-feeling um, urban milieu environment yeah, uh, benefiting of the, the, the um, the green voter. So if that's an establishment uh, party and the liberals, so for them, it's climate change. Yeah? So it's a big issue. Yeah? And uh, uh, um, um, uh, human values yeah, and politics. Yeah? Uh, um, um, a very um, um, welcome approach yeah, in migration policy. Yeah? So that's the green voter who can afford a lot. Yeah? So it's like the, the liberal voter yeah, in the east and, uh, east and west coast in the US. Yeah? That's this urban urban environment, yeah. The liberal voter, yeah, also very popular among the younger generation, yeah. It's more this um, digital savvy, yeah. So it's digitalization, modernization, economic opportunities, yeah. Believe in yourself, yeah, in, in, in your future, take it into your hands, yeah. Less state, uh, more individual freedom, yeah. Opportunities, yeah. So this is the liberal voter. That's why they are popular. So you have this climate, a uh, liberal values agenda for the Greens and this digital uh, uh, millennial uh, uh, younger voter yeah, for the liberals. Yeah? So for the traditional parties yeah, uh, of the center, the social Democrats and the CDU, yeah, they're losing out yeah, among the younger generation. And certainly uh, concerning for the CDU is yeah, that they are now at second place, only at second place yeah, among the older generation, yeah, among the the retired people, yeah. Um, this is yeah uh, uh, because uh, the, the Spitzenkandidat was not really attractive, yeah. And the CDU, the Conservatives, yeah, could not offer any 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 models, yeah, how to preserve a social market economy. It was too much stability, too much of a continuation, and not enough, yeah, of of a fresh start, fresh looks a fresh look into our challenges yeah and the stability of the um, retirement system yeah of the social system of the social care uh, system yeah certainly yeah uh, demands a fresh look yeah and some changes adjustments yeah because we all uh, well i mean we we face uh, demographic changes yeah our uh, population 
it's getting older, um, uh, lives longer, uh, uh, and it's it's longer entitled yeah, to to uh, benefits yeah, uh, within the retirement uh, system yeah. So the entire the, to balance the system yeah financially yeah has to um, has to be addressed yeah. And the CDU uh, did not come forward yeah with any new ideas yeah how to balance yeah. Uh, this uh, life expectancy, yeah, and the work life uh, expectancy, yeah. So um, many shifted, yeah, to the to the uh, social democrats. Yeah? So the younger generation shifts towards the liberals and the greens. Yeah? The older generation, yeah, remains within the traditional parties. Uh, um, but uh, the CDU uh, has has a very difficult uh, position. Uh, and on, on, on either end, so on the younger end and on the older end, uh, which is really concerning uh, for the uh, main uh, and top leadership of the uh, conservative movement in Germany. It's really concerning. So for Americans understanding where Germans are, the uh, Greens are perhaps the equivalent of uh, Bernie Sanders Democrats, would that be fair? And the Free Democrats are maybe sort of like American libertarians, is that a a fair approximation. Freedom, yes, with, with the liberals, yes, they're more like the libertarians. The Greens are more like this climate agenda, climate protection driven, progressive parts of the Democrats. And uh, the extreme parties, the far right. But it's not like 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 the uh, social social populism uh, from uh, of of Bernie Sanders. Uh, the, the Greens are less um, uh, social driven. They are more uh, the upper middle class. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not it's not the lower middle class, and and and, and the and the working uh, people, the blue collar voters, like Bernie Sanders types. But the Greens, it's really the upper middle class. It's the liberal the liberal elite East West Coast. Yeah, these are the Greens, the urban the urban elite, uh, 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 um, affluent affluent. Uh, urban elite in Germany. And the extreme parties, the far right and the, the descendants of the Communist Party, they together got what, 15, 18% of the vote? Exactly, exactly. So 15. So the, the uh, extreme right, 10, yeah, and the, the former communists, uh, five. So uh, no gains. Yeah. And it's mainly there are, um, as, as, as you said, uh, with the migration. Uh, when the right right wing uh, got a new boost, yeah, and a revival uh, with the migration crisis, yeah, this was a second um, well revival. Yeah, the first was the economic crisis, yeah, across Europe, yeah, the introduction uh, with the euro, yeah, and then the solidarity mechanism, yeah, financial solidar solidarity mechanisms uh, uh, to to the uh, to other European states. Uh, member states, uh, so that was the first boost for the AFD, anti-Brussels, uh, anti-European uh, integration, and then in 2015, anti-migration. And uh, But now they're a bit of uh, out of steam. So they benefit, and this has, uh, has, has um, um, we could see over the last years and has been proven yeah, in, in, in numerous um, studies. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the populist votes yeah, and right-wing votes yeah, are mainly linked to uh, a perception of, of um, 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 uh, behindness yeah, in economic development, yeah, of infrastructure behindness, yeah, of uh, a lack of opportunities. Yeah. So it's uh, the rural areas yeah, feel like being left behind and yeah, neglected in economic development. Yeah. And this is more a signal of protest, yeah, and not a, a coherent uh, 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 vote uh, for for any ide ideology. So it's more like an economic outcry and not an I ideology. And then finally, and uh, quickly, uh, Christian, uh, under a social democratic-led uh, government with the Free Democrats and the Greens, any major changes in German-American relations are basically mostly the status quo. No, no, I would dispute it. I would dispute it, yeah. It's, uh, it seems like, yeah, on, on, on the surface, yeah, like a continuation uh, uh, and, and, and some overlaps yeah, in the big policy issues like climate change, of course, yeah, a more uh, left uh, government in Germany uh, uh, puts climate change yeah, higher on the agenda. Yeah. 
or deficit spending. Yeah, so we abandon like this um, 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 strict budget rules yeah? and more are more inclined to deficit spending. Certainly uh, uh, in euro, yeah, with the euro bonds and more financial solidar solidarity after COVID. Um, maybe a tougher stance in human rights issues yeah, towards China and Russia. So these are the basic yeah, elements yeah, which certainly will be welcomed yeah, by the current administration yeah, um, um, in the context of the transatlantic relationships. Yeah. But a closer look, I would say, reveals yeah, the uh, defense spending, a yeah, big issue, yeah, but no left government in Germany yeah, would um, um, pledge to the 2% goal yeah, of defense spending. Yeah. Uh, uh, the big European um, uh, integration project, the uh, defense union, yeah, really to make Europe more relevant yeah, in, in uh, security policy. Yeah? So for the left, yeah, Europe uh, is, is, is more a social uh, project yeah, and not a defense uh, project. Yeah? On migration, um, what people expect uh, is it's really a balance uh, between integration yeah, and border security. Uh, so welcoming, yes, but border security too. So um, big issues, big question marks, yeah, if this balance uh, will, be, will be really achieved. Yeah? Um, uh, uh, sound finances yeah, uh, across Europe, yeah? um, open question. Yeah? Um, uh, China, Russia, yeah? do we see it more, both countries more uh, as, as authoritarian regimes yeah, with huge problems, yeah, domestic problems yeah, in human rights? Or do we really, see both countries yeah, as geopolitical competitors and rivalries yeah? uh, and uh, uh, both have to, be, uh, and have to be contained and, and um, 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 addressed yeah, adequately. Yeah? So in, 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 in a variety of uh, different forms, yeah? from, from diplomatic yeah, to economic uh, to military uh, forms. Yeah? So do we see it more in the broader geopolitical context or more as a human rights uh, issue and challenge. Yeah? So these are the bigger uh, uh, issues. Yeah? So um, in, in the first reaction, of course, I would say a lot of continuation and certainly uh, the prospective uh, new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, he is a uh, um, 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 uh, uh, very respected and known uh, uh, transatlanticist. Yeah? So he's pro-America yeah? and he has uh, um, um, uh, well-established uh, working relationships. Yeah? But he brings along a, a, a party, yeah, a political party, yeah? and the Green Party is against trade agreements. Yeah, so what our trade relationship, yeah, uh, is 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 not uh, moving forward, yeah, with a left government in Germany. Yeah, so I don't see any trade agreements uh, really uh, being accepted yeah, on the German side, yeah, um, with a left under a left government. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, anti-Americanism, yeah, which we even witnessed yeah, in the last years, yeah, under. Uh, very popular presidents uh, like uh, Barack Obama um, and still uh, now, but this anti-Americanism often comes from the left uh, in Germany. Yeah? So there are undercurrents. Yeah? I would say we have to, uh, to look at those undercurrents as well. And not only the big picture, and the big picture is uh, climate. Okay, we agree. Uh, China, yeah? so we have um, um, an, an, an alignment. Yeah? Russia as well. Yeah? Uh, and and um, uh, COVID, uh, international solidar solidarity, yes, of course. So the big picture, the big picture looks uh, uh, looks uh, prospective yeah, and optimistic. Yeah, the details, uh, I would say, the devil lies in the details. Uh, I would say this uh, requires a closer look yeah, and 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 a lot of work. Christian Forstner, head of the Hans Seidel Foundation's Washington D.C. office. Thank you for your overview of the German elections. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, goodbye.